We met this car back in 2016, when it didn't even have a Chinese name yet, and it was simply called Geely NL3. It was the latest development of the company at that time, which was brought to the Moscow Motor Show as a promising model, but we already talked about everything in great detail. We discussed the design developed under the leadership of Peter Vorbury, the main technical features, which were largely determined by cooperation with the controlled brand Volvo, and his, as they say, rich inner world. In the same 2016, the car was named Buyue and began to quickly gain popularity. Its assembly began at two factories in China. In 2017, they were joined by a plant in Malaysia, and then in Pakistan, in these markets, the car went on sale as the Proton X70, but in South America, the same car was sold as the Gilium Grand X7 Sport. Finally, in 2018, a plant was launched in the Belarusian city of Zodino, and crossovers, which received the name Atlas, which is more familiar to our ears, began to enter the Russian market. At one time, we talked about the start of production and how it is organized there, tested the car at home, in China, and then published a detailed test of already commercial cars. At first, sales in Russia were not shaky, but in the summer of 2019, Geely Atlas won the title of the best-selling Chinese model in Russia. Sales of cars equipped with a head unit with the installed Yandex Auto Package and Alice Voice Assistant began, and the 184 horsepower 1.8 liter 4G 18 TDB turbo engine was added to the line of engines. Before that, only 2 liter 4G 20 with a capacity of 139 horsepower were supplied to us, which worked in tandem with six speed get rag mechanics and 2.4 liter 150 horsepower aspirated JLD 4G24 paired with 6 speed fluid mechanics. It is worth noting that at home, in China, this 2.4 liter the second motor develops 177 horsepower and for our market it was specially derated to fit into the tax requirements. But the 1.5 liter 3 cylinder turbo engine 3G15 TDB, known to us from the Atlas Pro and Cool Ray models, was not installed on the Geely Atlas of the Belarusian assembly. From a technical point of view, the Atlas is a typical mid size crossover. Suspensions are independent, McPherson struts in front, multi link in the back, front or full drive, with an automatically connected front axle. The car remains in the production program of the plant in Zodino today, although the life cycle of the model is coming to a logical end, and in the overall sales rating of Chinese cars it has fallen back to 7th place, so brand new Geely Atlas can be purchased at official dealerships at a price of 2,228,900 for the standard package with a 2-liter engine and mechanics to 2,797,990 rubles for the luxury LED Yandex Auto package with a 2.4 liter engine and automatic while receiving quite solid credit and trade in discounts. But you can save money by trying to look after the car in the secondary market where they cost from 1.1 to 1.2 million to 2.4 to 2.5 million. Those who are not satisfied with the Geely Atlas Dynamics with a 150 horsepower aspirated engine and who would like to try this crossover with a more powerful turbo engine will also have to look for a used car. Today there are no such cars either in showrooms or on the official website of the brand. But on the secondary market they are sold at a price of 1.3 to 2.1 million. Well, in order to make your choice with open eyes, let's see what their real owners write about Geely Atlas. Hate number 5, cross-country ability and ground clearance. Outwardly, Geely Atlas does not look very brutal, but quite courageous, a sort of strong man, quite ready for a variety of adventures. It's just worth it right away, at the selection stage, to take into account that the cross-country ability of this car cannot be called champion even within the crossover class. Actually, the authors of reviews on the internet frankly indicate that the main contradiction of the model is the combination of a very good all-wheel drive with not the most outstanding ground clearance, which, according to official data, is 190 millimeters. And this is not to say that it's a lot. Passability through snowdrifts, it will crawl until it sits on its belly, and the belly hangs low enough, not a jeep, however, this must be remembered, the suspension travels are quite large, but the ground clearance leaves much to be desired. What the Atlas really lacks is a slightly stiffer suspension and ground clearance plus another 4 centimeters. 
On top of that, as a rule, even at the stage of pre-sale preparation, dealers equip the car with additional protective elements. On the one hand, this is good, since the likelihood of damaging vital components when driving off paved roads is reduced. But on the other hand, there is a minus any installation of elements of this kind reduces the already small clearance. As the owners write, the clearance is heavily stolen by all sorts of protections, engine, tank, clutch, there is a temptation to use the car off-road, but here the crossover clearance intervenes, 190 millimeters is declared, in reality, I think, less, and even less with installed protections. Clings to bumps, scratches, when installing a metal crankcase protection, the clearance is 170 millimeters. Not enough for a crossover. Nevertheless, the all-wheel drive itself works quite confidently in any case, in most life situations it can quite help out, in winter I got out of the deepest snowdrifts, all-wheel drive and the box are at a height, you skid as much as necessary, nothing overheats, the all-wheel drive works as it should, I already checked it on the dirt road, and it never failed me in winter. In mountainous areas, the solid suspension moves fully effect. I didn't get stuck anywhere, I didn't strike the bottom anywhere if the suspension moves are very good, the Tucson is resting, I definitely wouldn't climb there. Stop 10 meters before the waterfall. Cool. Before that, I saw that UAZs were climbing there. Agree, on long journeys this can be very useful. But still, it's worth soberly assessing the capabilities of the car. Towing rings are not in the most convenient place, so if you get into the mud, you will have to dig them out. By the way, the very need for all-wheel drive owners evaluate differently. Some believe that front-wheel drive is enough for them, there are no frustrations from the fact that I only have front-wheel drive, and not all-wheel drive I went from everywhere where I wanted to go, within reason, of course. But others regret that they decided to save money. It was necessary to take all-wheel drive, there were problems a couple of times in the front this winter, and in the spring of last year, the wife moved out onto wet ground and sat down. It was possible to get out only after it became dry. Love number 5, Design Appearance Geely Atlas can no doubt be attributed to the strengths of this model. You can feel the hand of a craftsman in it, and Peter Horbury, who led the design team, can certainly be considered a true master with extensive experience in the premium segment, including as chief designer of Ford Motors' premier automotive group, which included such brands like Jaguar, Land Rover, Aston Martin, and Volvo. As a result, there is not a single person who would accuse Atlas of being Asian, excessive pretentiousness, or of strange, unusual forms for our eyes. At one time, Horbury gave a great interview to our publication, and after reading it, you may understand why Atlas got such a look. Of course, the aesthetic perception of all people is different, and, probably, there is not a single car whose appearance would be liked by absolutely everyone. But in the case of Atlas, the most negative of the reviews I met was this, in terms of appearance, it does not cause any emotions in me, yes, it looks nice, but it's quite standard for such cars. But my wife really likes the look. But among the authors of the reviews, there are still many more of those who not only like the appearance of the Atlas, but really like it. I still go around the car in the morning with the phrase, beautiful, damn it, beautiful, I think the best in the class in terms of visual indicators. By the way, the owners who call the Geely Atlas body not only beautiful, but also practical, have certain reasons for this. For example, many note that in bad weather the rear window does not throw mud, and after such a trip you do not risk getting your pants dirty on the threshold when leaving the car. Hate number 4, touch locks and containers in the cabin. But getting inside the car in rain, snow, or just bad weather is not easy. The fact is that sensor-doored locks work flawlessly even in 25 degree frost, but only on condition that the door handles remain dry and clean. But as soon as they get dirty on the highway during a trip through the urals a car dirty under the roof quite often refused to open slash close although it was warm well that's why he is a sensor he loves cleanliness the door handle sensor always works when it's clean even if you're wearing gloves dirty doesn't always work geely atlas touch locks are by no means the only thing that can cause criticism in many reviews, the authors note that they do not really like how niches, 
pockets, and other containers are organized in the cabin. I don't understand at all why the niches are made in front along the edges of the tunnel. Their size is such that a modern phone does not fit there. Under the lighter? Or maybe a pager? Well, or under the old push-button cellular type of the 25th Siemens, they are perplexed. The door pocket is also very narrow. Well, I don't like to take a few bottles of 0.33 on the road. I'd rather take a liter or even 1.5 liters. And this pocket is such that even a liter bottle does not fit in there. And very contradictory assessments of the trunk. For different authors, they can diverge in the most diametrical way. Some write that the trunk is just gigantic, others that the trunk is frankly small, through a stroller and three to four more bags from the supermarket, and that's it. Others say that the Geely Atlas trunk is just a trunk, which, in principle, is enough for everyday needs. Even about the presence of solid containers under the raised floor, around the stowage, the owners note in a diametrically opposite way. It seems to some that this is an excellent solution. If you look into the compartment with a spare tire, there is more than enough space. Almost all rubbish can be stuffed in there. There is a stowaway under the shelf, and there is a lot of free space around it, where you can put a lot of things you need, keys, a pump, a rope, so that they don't hang around the trunk, all the junk, and there is a lot of it, which I previously carried in the trunks of other cars and baskets, went into the underground, to the spare wheel. This is my first car with a completely empty luggage compartment. And it seems to someone that the trunk is two layer, and this is more a minus than a plus. Love number four, interior quality, ergonomics, nice touches. As for the salon, in the vast majority of reviews, the authors praise it. First of all, they like the build quality and finishing materials, greatly done interior. Details are fitted, as in a decent European car, the salon is beautiful and modern. The front panel and instruments are beautiful and strict, leatherette, with a high claim to genuine leather. There are, of course, small remarks, for example, that a completely readable dashboard is literally stuffed with all sorts of information so that you don't immediately find the numbers you need, but you get used to it over time. The quality of the materials is evidenced by the fact that even after two or three years of operation, the leather in the cabin is without scuffs, the steering wheel too, the plastic is like new. True, not everyone liked the steering wheel itself, the material is terrible, like some kind of rubber, thin and not responsive. It's inconvenient to drive, and in so many reviews there are complaints about the insufficient range of steering adjustment for reach. In several reviews, the authors complained about the unpleasant chemical smell in the interiors of new cars. The most unpleasant thing in the cabin is the smell. It's been two weeks now, and it hasn't faded at all. There was a slight smell in the cabin for 600 kilometers, three weeks. But a number of owners are ready to challenge these statements. There is no smell of cheap plastic. There was no smell of terrible plastic. In general, there are no serious complaints about the ergonomics of the driver's seat. Everything is convenient, ergonomic, intuitive, everything is like the Europeans and Koreans. Sat down and went, I rode on many things, but the way the landing on the Atlas is implemented is beyond praise. My height is 187 centimeters, my wife is 162, and the adjustment range for a comfortable fit is plus or minus 20 to 30 centimeters. The seats are class. Of course, you won't please everyone. Someone thinks that the driver's seat is too shifted to the left, and you rest your shoulder against the rack. Someone would not mind if the driver's seat received adjustable lumbar support, but even without it everything is very good. Just returned from a vacation in Sochi, drove a total of 3,700 kilometers. On the way back, I spent 15 hours behind the wheel in one day, and my back was not tired at all. The owners are especially pleased with the space and comfort on the second row, places for rear passengers at least play football. The heating of the armchairs and the sofa works both on the seats and on the backs. There is more than enough space in the back. The daughter disposed of the rear space all the way, as if it were her own travel room. Well, in addition to a high-quality, well-assembled, convenient and very comfortable interior, in general, the word comfort is very often used in reviews of the Geely Atlas, and it can be considered key in characterizing this car. The authors of the reviews note small, but very pleasant little things. 
For example, the quality of door seals, dustproof 5 points out of 5. The interior is clean, you feel like a person. There is a dense half centimeter layer of road and mountain dust on the wheelbarrow, the car is clean. A lot of people like the ability to control the right front seat from the driver's seat, adjusting the passenger seat from the driver's side is a mega convenient thing for traveling with a child, the control of the passenger seat from the driver on the electric drive is implemented very conveniently. A trifle, but nice. Or take the location of the USB slots. Not everyone likes the fact that such a slot and a 12 volt socket are hidden in the box armrest, although this is a rather traditional solution, but the reviewers consider the presence of a USB output near the salon mirror to be a great idea. Indeed, I bought a small cord and connected the DVR without unnecessary dismantling of the cladding. In a word, a very friendly interior, both for the driver and passengers. It is no coincidence that sometimes this is what becomes the decisive factor when making a purchase decision. My wife said that she didn't want to get out of the car, and at that moment I realized that Atlas would be bought by us. Hate number three, boring dynamics and brooding box. No one expresses particular enthusiasm about the dynamic potential of Geely Atlas. In our country, cars with three variants of four-cylinder gasoline engines were actually sold, two aspirated, 2 liter 4G20 and 2.4 liter JLD 4G24, as well as a 1.8 liter 4G18 TDB turbo engine. It's not worth talking about the 2 liter version, which was also equipped exclusively with mechanics. It was not initially popular. At present, there are simply no such cars in showrooms, and there are very few of them on the secondary market. The reasons are clear the owners evaluate them more than critically. In the homeland of the model, more than 80% of sales are accounted for by the version with a 184 horsepower turbo engine. It was also sold with us, and there are no serious complaints about its dynamics. However, there are no special enthusiasms, a simple statement of facts. The turbine turns from 1.5 thousand, it can push into the back from 20 to 30, and from 120 kilometers slash h. But the main engine for the Atlas in Russia was a 2.4 liter aspirated. There are exactly two reasons for this. Buyers did not want to mess with a turbo engine, fearing that it would turn out to be unreliable. Well, and the price factor. And as a result, some of those who preferred a more reliable atmospheric tit to a turbocharged crane expressed their regrets in the reviews. I regret that I did not pay 100,000 rubles in due time and did not take 1.8 T. I'll take my words back if the 1.8T after 100,000 runs starts to give out problems and pull money out of the owners. Well, the topic of the dynamics of 2.4 liter atlases has become the subject, if not of discussion, then of quite active discussion. Someone speaks very radically, on this heavy, almost 2 ton barge, the 2.4 engine is simply dead by nature. Yes, this is an old engine, rooted from Toyota. But there was about 164 horsepower and here 150 horsepower and even the box in third gear does not spin up more than 4900 rpm if in the city atlas copes well with everyday tasks then on the highway in the absence of oncoming cars while you overtake a trucker a car is already coming towards you the bulk of the owners speak in a calmer manner but everyone admits that this is not a sports car especially with an automatic and you should not expect miracles from it the car is able to confidently start and drive in the stream rebuild if necessary with acceleration accelerate within their capabilities and nothing more but here i don't feel flawed in it a bit and one more thing in order for atlas to depict at least something resembling active acceleration you need to feel free to press the gas pedal the gas pedal works in a peculiar way in tandem with the gearbox you need to get used to it indeed not only the naturally aspirated engine is to blame for the modest dynamic capabilities of geely atlas strangled from the original 174 to 150 horsepower in order to fit into the tax optimal zone the motor clearly lacks not only power but also torque at low revs and it also does not really like to spin in a word its capabilities are quite enough for the city driving in the stream along the highway is also but you must always keep in mind that Atlas cannot make quick changes. The second culprit is the Australian DSI, Drivetrain Systems International, 6-speed hydraulics. 
It is quite reliable subject to regular maintenance every 60,000 kilometers, but it gets a well-deserved portion of driver's fee for thoughtfulness. The automatic machine is thoughtful. The settings are not very logical for me yet. I haven't found a kickdown yet. I wonder if there is one here at all. When driving uphill, it seems like it should switch to a lower gear, but no, it will go like that, barely puffing. It's especially annoying when overtaking. The box has sport and eco modes, but they do not cause much enthusiasm among the owners. If in the sport mode the box works even more or less quickly, then I don't understand why the eco mode is needed. I left almost a tank in this mode. I didn't notice any savings at all, but I felt like a snowdrop in retirement. Love number three, suspension, brakes, ride comfort. And this peace and comfort is provided by a perfectly tuned suspension. The suspension is nothing to write about. It is very comfortable. It works out bumps very well. It doesn't roll like on Jeeps, and it's not as tough as on modern crossovers. On the same Tiguan, its settings, I would say, are average, and for me it's just right for an almost two-ton car. It is clear that most of all the owners like the way the car behaves on our directions. It goes on the primer in general, a fairy tale colleagues at work appreciated it but as always this setting has a downside roll and roll in corners for such softness we pay with controllability the main problem is lateral rolls and corners rolls dangerously on corners i think it makes no sense to describe how atlas behaves on the highway quite a roll suspension requires slowing down before cornering the owner's note here of course a lot depends on the driver's temperament heels yes the devil knows i'm not a racer but at 50 kilometers slash h the interchange on the moscow ring road with dry asphalt passes confidently and does not fall well in many reviews the authors note excellent brakes brakes are shiny transparent and predictable further we press more braking force very effective it has been tested and during emergency braking the emergency light comes on well, all this together allows the owners to talk about driving pleasure. If, of course, a calm ride can give them positive emotions, riding this car is really a pleasure. There is absolutely nothing to complain about in its behavior. It drives as it should. The suspension works out. The reactions to the steering wheel are adequate. There is no need to adapt and adjust to anything at all. Hate number two, multimedia and beyond. It would seem that there should be no problems at all with electronic devices in Chinese cars because it is from China that a mighty stream of various consumer electronics comes to us and many Chinese brands only confirm this point of view. Alas, in the case of Geely Atlas, everything is not so and it was the head unit as well as the speaker system as a whole that became the target for many critical errors. Let's start with the head unit itself. As the owners write, the multimedia control touchscreen is a little blunt, apparently, they fought not for sensitivity, but for strength. The PG version with the iGo navigation program does not work well, there are only maps for Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus, and the old ones, there is no routing through traffic jams. At the same time, it often fails to integrate existing smartphones, and the owners ask a completely reasonable question, install an additional device for navigation, and I drive quite actively, absolutely nowhere. On the panel, close the review. Why then this regular big TV in the car? Speakerphone via Bluetooth does not always work correctly either. When listening to music, it works well, but what happens to it during a telephone conversation? When connecting via BT, my subscriber hears a crash, words fall out, the connection breaks. An even more paradoxical situation arises when the call goes through with the head unit turned off. The phone will still be connected, the instrument panel will show that the connection is in progress, but you will not be able to turn on the speakerphone even with multimedia active. We have to be distracted and call back, or just beat off the caller, the owners complain. Many problems arise when playing music from a flash card. The flash drive must be booted entirely, for which it is better to listen to the radio for about 5 minutes and only then switch to music from USB. After the car stops, the device starts playing from the first track in the list. At the same time, whether you like it or not, multimedia will turn on every time you start the car and far from being quiet. As a result, the owners complain. 
I use multimedia only for listening to the radio and for all-round cameras. The remaining functions, although declared, either work incorrectly or do not work at all. Recently, buyers have been offered a GU with a pre-installed Yandex Auto system, but it also collects no less criticism. In general, all the variants of the GU that Atlas was equipped with are scolded for the sound quality. I decided to make music in the car, it's sad. I changed the standard speakers to normal ones, and, to my surprise, the difference turned out to be quite small due to mid-frequencies. I realized that the head unit strongly cuts the lower frequencies, and the upper ones are strongly pulled up. At the same time, the owners of Geely Atlas make claims not only against music. They do not like that the electronics do not remember any selected settings, box operation mode, dashboard display settings, that the interior light, if you forget to turn it off, will be on all night, that the light sensor has excessive sensitivity, due to which the backlight of the radio and the dashboard is constantly blinking and switching. Onboard computer with a bunch of some functions that I still can't use. The algorithm for working with him was invented by the Viceroy of the Devil on Chinese soil. Maybe someone knows how to make the front parking sensors not turn off automatically. Every time you think that it is on, but it does not react in any way, while behind the gear lever, when D is stuck, it is not visible whether the light on it is on or not. Once the parking column didn't move a little, but it constantly turns on when you back out, the logic of the Chinese is just a bomb. Love number two, light and review. That's what the owners have practically no complaints about, so it's the quality of the headlight, especially when it comes to trim levels with LED headlights, LED lighting, of course, is beyond praise. The near border of the light does not scatter, as if it cuts out a light piece from the darkness. The distant one is the distant one, and shines like a good distant one. There are, of course, certain remarks, for example, this, the light is great when the headlights are clean. On the track in the slush, there is not enough headlight washer. Or, for example, the author of one of the reviews is completely bewildered by the algorithm of the cornering illumination. The fog lights light up when the steering wheel is turned, but for some reason both at once. Indeed, it would be somewhat more logical to turn on the headlight only from the side where the car turns, but in general, everyone unanimously refers to the light as the strengths of the model, however, as well as visibility from the driver's seat. Visibility for the driver is excellent, comfortable large side mirrors, the owners write in their reviews. Of course, a situation where absolutely everyone is happy is a utopia. But I came across only one review in which the owner sarcastically complained about the poor view back through the salon mirror. The rest are satisfied with everything, especially since the Atlas is equipped with a good all-round visibility system. The 360 degrees panorama is more like a cartoon, but everything is clear and convenient when parking. You just need to get used to using this tool and be aware of certain limitations. The front camera, like the rear one with markings, monitors the distance to the bottom point, so do not try to drive up to trucks whose wheels are 3 meters away from you, according to the camera, and the body is already striking on your roof. Hate number 1. Fuel Consumption and Maintenance Costs Yes, fuel consumption has become a sore spot for Geely Atlas owners. Oddly enough, the owners of turbocharged cars take this issue quite calmly, although they do not express much satisfaction, fuel consumption. On the track, well, it's like driving. If, like me, periodically using the sport mode for overtaking, tumble in free areas, then from 8 liters or more. It is quite possible, I think, to achieve average performance on the track of about 7 liters. In the city, fuel consumption during the run-in started from 13.3 L-100 km on the AI 95 inch. Consumption, if you drive dynamically, is 13 to 15 liters per hundred. We have to turn into a pensioner, and then we have 9 to 11. Well, between the owners of cars with a 2.4 liter aspirated, fierce discussions flare up. Some argue that the consumption of the Atlas is 14 to 17 L slash 100 kilometers in the city and 9 to 12 on the highway. Agree, this is already a lot for a car that does not demonstrate the burrows of a prize trotter. 
Others argue that everything is fine, fuel consumption in the combined cycle when driving at a speed of 100 to 120 km slash h does not rise more than 8.5 L slash 100 km, but on the highway it drops to 7.2 to 7.5 L slash 100 km. At the same time, everyone admits that the onboard computer is brazenly lying, underestimating the fuel consumption of a liter by two compared to the numbers that are obtained when calculating according to checks and mileage. Perhaps we can agree that on long trips the consumption will be about 10 L slash 100 kilometers and in dense city traffic about 13 to 15 liters. This is consistent with the statement that a tank of 95 octane gasoline is enough for 500 kilometers on the highway and about 350 kilometers in the city. In a word, it is not in vain that the owners warn, do not expect economical driving at high speeds from the Atlas. She won't be. But if you fit into the permitted speed limit, then the onboard computer will show 7.5 to 8.5 liters per 100 kilometers, which will correspond to the real 9 to 10 liters per 100. It should also be taken into account that the volume of the Geely Atlas fuel tank is not so large. According to the technical data table, it is 60 liters, but filling it under the cork is almost impossible. 45 liters come in, and then the rest takes a very long time. It constantly cuts off because of the foam. It must be poured in a thin stream. When refueling, I don't add 10 liters to a full tank. The gas station pistol fires. Another point that really annoys Geely Atlas owners is the cost of servicing in official services. T.O. did for 15,000, 18,000, and 24,000 rubles. And if we consider that the frequency of maintenance is 10,000 kilometers, then the picture is not too encouraging, so many owners, after the second or third maintenance, leave them for the open spaces of private car services. There are also enough complaints about the high cost of spare parts and components. The official parts are very expensive, as if they were for Mercedes. Much cheaper on the side, prices for horse components, thank God, analogs began to appear. For brake pads, the dealer wants five mowers for a pair, a complete set for a gold piece. There are only two spoons of honey in this barrel of tar. Firstly, Atlas was not seen in the oil burner. For two years of operation, I have never added oil. I don't see any oil consumption. Well, and secondly, reviews with heartbreaking complaints that the car began to crumble after the purchase and the repairs dealt an irreparable blow to the family budget, I somehow didn't get either. If the authors mention repairs, then somehow everything is trifles, replacing the wheel bearing, stabilizer strut, and even then under warranty. Of the three Atlas owners in my environment, none of them encountered breakdowns, cars of 2020 and 2021. In the general group of Atlas owners in the Republic of Belarus and the Russian Federation, no one spits poison in the direction of unreliability. Love number one, noise isolation, comfort, value for money. I have already noted that the word comfort is key when discussing Geely Atlas. We have already discussed both the convenience of the cabin and the smoothness of the ride. But the fact that the owners call acoustic comfort and sound insulation one of the main advantages of the model came as a big surprise to me, because when preparing materials for a column dedicated to much more expensive models of prestigious brands, I constantly had to deal with, with complaints about the noise in the cabin. And here the owners praise the soundproofing almost in unison. The cabin is very quiet. I repeat, be quiet. And, believe me, I have something to compare with. Super soundproofing is simply beyond praise. The owners write, and there are still very, very many statements of this kind. Of course, perfection is unattainable, but in the worst case, the authors of the reviews advise to slightly noise the wheel arches, and then there will definitely be an almost unattainable ideal, since the noise from the engine and gearbox practically does not penetrate into the cabin anyway. Well, in the aggregate, all comfort factors make us perceive both the price of the car and the cost of its maintenance. You get into the car, and there is only one word in your head, comfort. I don't know what will happen next and how the market will turn, but at the moment I consider the Atlas the best investment in terms of price slash quality and in terms of driving sensations. True, the moral support of the owners in some cases is not very superfluous because the number of haters of Chinese brands in the Russian automotive community is incalculable. 
I don't care if it's Chinese or someone else, I'm only interested in performance and comfort. The owners write in their hearts, and many commentators try to convince them that they bought a complete crap that will fall apart in 50000 and which in a year they will not be able to sell even at half the price. True, these arguments are not yet true. As a result, there are not so many who want to get rid of Geely Atlas due to the fact that they did not agree on the characters, although, of course, such cases also occur. There are those who believe that Atlas is not worth the money that is asked for it, but there are still more of those for whom the advantages of the model outweighed its shortcomings. So this opinion can be called quite typical, almost two years with a car, and now there is no desire to sell it. Yes, the consumption, yes, it doesn't go, yes, something might still be wrong, but as soon as you sat down, started it up and drove smoothly, softly, comfortably, quietly, and with all-wheel drive through the mud, you begin to put up with the expense, a small trunk, by the way, yes, I remembered, the trunk is small. He just takes you in his comfort, every day, every hour when you are in it. Remember, dear reader, quiet, comfortable, unhurried, this is Geely Atlas.